This video is continuing the series on drugs used to treat neuropathic pain and canine Chiari malformation and syringomyelia, and we're going to discuss the anti-epilepsy drug topiramate. Although topiramate is classified as an anti-epilepsy drug, it does have a very broad spectrum of action and it can be useful in quite a few hard to treat neurological diseases. It um, has like many uh, broad spectrum anti-epilepsy drugs, many sites of action. What it's most uh, generally regarded as is a voltage dependent sodium channel blocker, reduces ectopic firing in peripheral nerves and the dorsal nerve root ganglion, but also centrally. And it's thought that that is the main mechanism by which it's effective for seizures. Uh, it um, also will potentiate GABA neurotransmission, which is inhibitory neurotransmission and reduce excitatory neurotransmission by having an effect on canite uh, evoked currents and reducing uh, glutamate neurotransmission and also inhibition of voltage gated um, uh, sorry voltage activated calcium channels interestingly it also inhibits carbonic anhydrase and this could do two things in the brain the first is it reduces the synaptic ph which may have some use in management of epilepsy and also paroxysmal dyskinesias it also carbonic anhydrase is the enzyme which um, is involved with production of cerebral spinal fluid and so hypothetically it could reduce production of cerebral spinal fluid and be useful in some disorders such as as hydrocephalus in humans its primary use is as an anti-epilepsy drug and there is some studies of it being used in animals and it, it can be useful in some situations but it's not a first-line drug in humans, it is a first line drug for migraine management uh, and it can be very effective for some humans with this disorder. Obviously, as a, uh, a condition of pain, it's very difficult to know if dogs or cats ever get migraines. Sometimes it's suspected by behaviour, which would suggest they have head pain with photophobia and that this occurs in paroxysms, but really very, very difficult to prove. However, what is interesting is that a lot of the work done uh, for uh, the, uh, proving that it was effective for humans was actually done in laboratory cats. And uh, therefore, we do know about its mechanism of action, at least in, in, in cats, uh, which I use for uh, justification when using it for treating neuropathic pain in felines. It is neuroprotective and anti-inflammatory in some rodent models of neuropathies, and it has been shown to have some benefit in some neuropathies, such as diabetic neuropathy, uh, although it's not commonly used for that in, in, in humans. Uh, but uh, it is interesting that it has that kind of neuroprotective effect. It is more effective than acetazolamide for lowering intracranial pressure, which again was done in rodent models, and this is because of its action as a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. But that is quite interesting because we, uh, a lot of clinicians will use acetazolamide for acute hydrocephalus cases uh, as something to lower the intracranial pressure. And perhaps we should consider using topiramate instead, except that topiramate is sedative, uh, whereas acetazolamide isn't. So you'd have to bear that in mind. However, uh, it's unlikely that topiramate would be a useful drug in the long term for this. Uh, acetazolamide certainly isn't useful in the long term, more than two weeks for treating hydrocephalus. It's effective for neuropathic pain in syringomyelia. There was a double blind study looking at this. It wasn't as effective as pregabalin, so that will probably remain our first or second line therapy for that disease. However, it was effective. Some dogs in that study, actually, the owners said the dogs were better on topiramate. And nowadays I use it in combination with pregabalin as, uh, uh, as a drug to use in more challenging cases. In humans, it's also used as a, a, an add-on drug to treatment-resistant obsessive-compulsive disorders. So when you're very challenging to, uh, to treat disorders, it's also used for some other uh, mental health disorders such as uh, alcohol dependence and um, uh, uh, eating disorders, especially ones where they may have bulimia or overeating. Uh, and that's partly because topiramate is an appetite suppressant. 
uh, it's very difficult to know if dogs have the same as obsessive compulsive disorder. We certainly don't know whether they have obsessive thoughts, but I have used it in some challenging neurobehavioral disorders. So what's the dose rate? Well, it's got a much uh, shorter half-life in the dog than the cat. And so in the dog, we tend to have to give higher doses, 10 milligrams per kilogram, every eight hours. Whereas in the cat, you can get away with every 12 hours or perhaps in the extended um, release formation, perhaps every 24 hours, which might make it attractive drug in the cat, which is uh, always a species much more difficult to medicate. And the dose I use in cats is, is much lower, uh, and I may even start lower than that and titrate up to that dose. You do need to monitor the haematology and serum biochemistry, and I also um, will monitor serum concentrations uh, in, in, in many animals. There's an argument for monitoring serum bicarbonate, and this is because the main side effect of topiramate is causing a, a metabolic acidosis. And certainly, if an animal is taking topiramate and is sick, not doing very well, then I would uh, be very suspicious of a metabolic acidosis. Its potential adverse effects, well, as I've said before, sedation. Given by itself, it's not a particularly sedative drug, but in a lot of the diseases that I will use it for, it's an add-on um, to another agent, and all of those agents may have their sedative uh, side effects combined. So if you add it to pregabalin, you can expect more sedation, etc. Its main side effects are uh, by causing a metabolic acidosis, and that can result in gastrointestinal side effects, such as inappetence, uh, not wanting to um, eat as much. Uh, certainly when we were doing the trial comparing to pyramate and pregabalin, we certainly noticed that when animals were switched, remember it was a blind trial, from pregabalin, an appetite stimulant, to topiramate, the owners really noticed and often reported anorexia as, as a side effect. But actually, it was that 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 it wasn't that the animals weren't eating at all. It was just that the difference was so profound. Now, sometimes I use that to my advantage because if you have a dog that is really eating a lot on pregabalin, is gaining a lot of weight, and you're trying to think of what other um, medication to add to their regime because they're still painful or perhaps the weight gain is is uh, really problematic uh, because obesity has a negative effect on many diseases, then you may want to consider topiramate because it doesn't increase that appetite. Um, it can cause nausea and gastrointestinal side effects and I find that rare, but if it does, if it does occur in that animal, um, I found there's really no choice but to withdraw that drug and try something else. Uh, it has been associated with anemia, especially in the um, uh, long acting medication that was given as a trial for epilepsy in cats. And so, again, uh, it's, it's definitely something to be routinely monitoring. Um, I will uh, monitor before and uh, after, usually a sort of a month afterwards, uh, and then uh, every three months. And if I know the animal is stable, then go to every every six months, uh, perhaps longer if the animal has been on it for, for years and has been stable. Because of that metabolic acidosis, it is has been associated with renal tubular acidosis, again with the long acting preparation given in cats. And that tuba, uh, tubular acidosis was associated with um, hyperkalemia in that uh, in that cat. So when do I use topiramate? Well, a dog has said it has a short half-life, so that does limit when I use it. For example, I, d I don't tend to use it for epilepsy in the dog. Uh, probably the most common would be Chiari pain and syringomyelia, although I have to say that this is usually fourth-line therapy for that, so, and it's usually in combination. So, for example, it, the dog may already be on pregabalin and, uh, and grapaprint, uh, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Uh, and um, then I might add to pyramate in there. I will sometimes use it in what I loosely call compulsive disorders, for example, tail chasing. Usually this is after I've tried other therapy, um, for example, fluoxetine. It's usually again in combination with pregabalin because pregabalin can affect those glutamate circuits, which can be involved with compulsive disorders. Um, quite a complicated subject and, and the subject really for another YouTube video. 
I will use it with peripheral neuropathic pain with mutilation. And I, f I found that when uh, you have those extremely challenging cases where the animal is, is um, quite literally eating themselves, that topiramate is an extremely useful drug. Again, um, I don't usually go straight to that unless the, there is, uh, the animal is in danger um, because of its severe mutilation. It's usually uh, combined with other drugs. It has been associated with other pain disorders, and this was this rather um, uh, uh, good paper here for, coming out of the Royal Veterinary College, where they had really quite good evidence that the dog may have been suffering from a migraine, and the dog cer certainly responded to, to pyramate, uh, which, uh, as I said before, is used as a uh, first-line agent for uh, migraine in humans. Uh, it is possible use, as I've said before, in CSF disorders, which again is one of the reasons why I might use it for Chiari pain and uh, syringomyelia. Uh, I have used it uh, very occasionally in paroxysmal dyskinesia, um, and that's really if, if um, my most useful drug for that disease is fluoxetine, sometimes levetiracetam. Um, but, and I will certainly use topiramate before I use acetazolamide, which is... Um, a, a drug which is um, more commonly discussed for, for treatment of paroxysmal dyskinesia, but in my experience is much more likely to result in a metabolic acidosis when you use it long term. And in humans, it's used for essential tremor. Um, and so I've put the tremor question mark there because I've never actually used it for tremor. But um, if I had a very difficult case, say, of uh, orthostatic tremor that hadn't responded to gabapentin or phenobarbital, then I would certainly consider this drug. In the cat, um, I'm actually much more likely to use topiramate. Um, uh, I um, have uh, more commonly used it for peripheral neuropathic pain with mutilation. So the classic one for me would be where they are mutilating their tail. Um, uh, for example, post-tail trauma or after um, uh, amputation and having uh, pain still in the stump. Uh, some cases that are called uh, feline hyperesthesia syndrome are actually more classically tail mutilation and this drug uh, can be useful in that instance. I will actually still use it in feline hyperesthesia syndrome. Uh, I believe that this is a pain disorder. I make sure that I absolutely rule out skin disease and, uh, 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 and spinal pain first. Um, and it is usually a second or third line therapy, again, usually in combination with pregabalin. I will use it, however, for epilepsy in cats. I find it a, a, quite a useful add-on drug uh, for very difficult uh, to control cases. So it will be my third or fourth line therapy in combination usually with other drugs. Some of you may be wondering about uh, what sort of effect it might have on the liver. Uh, it's actually relatively safe, at least in humans. It's never really been had long-term tests in dogs and cats. Uh, it, although it will require some liver metabolism, it is um, given to patients with hepatopathies um, because it is a drug that is used for alcohol dependence and it's very rarely associated with liver side effects. And so I have combined a uh, topiramate safely with phenobarbital uh, in management of epilepsy in cats, although, of course, I would always monitor that. And uh, in the rare cases of movement disorders, including paroxysmal dyskinesia in cats, um, I have used topiramate successfully. And so that rounds up this uh, uh, use of this rather unusual um, and quite unique because it has so many different mechanisms of action uh, drug and what I basically use it for. Thank you very much.